Today I'm finally sharing our bathroom gut job reno and reveal. So this bathroom is the only one we have in our home. We live in a two bedroom, one bath, thousand square foot home and my hands can touch from wall to wall and it is quite small the other direction too. So we needed to revamp our bathroom. We gutted it down to the studs. We had to get rid of some termite damage a little bit. We got a new tub. My husband tiled. We put up some aesthetically pleasing pieces like beadboard, got a new vanity, found new lighting, everything. Everything is just completely new, new flooring. And I am so excited to share this bathroom with you. So first off, home projects take way longer than anticipated, especially when we are doing them ourselves. And when my husband works an eight to five job, he owns his own business. When I've got two little girls, a lot of the larger projects, like hanging sheetrock, tiling, I did not do. I am pregnant right now when you are seeing this. And so I couldn't do a lot of those things. So it took uh, probably twice as long as we were anticipating, but it has finally come to fruition. And so here it is, the bathroom reveal. And I'm just gonna start off from the very beginning, show some footage of like the work that was done, what it looked like before, and share currently what I'm standing in. So to begin with, it was painted a dark blue, it had black tile trim, it had gray flooring on the shower walls above the plastic built-in shower, and then um, gray tile around the sink vanity area. The vanity was like a homemade vanity, and so it was like built into the ground. It was the weirdest thing. And so after we took that out, we saw it was like set down into the floor. And the tiling was just breaking all over. We'd find little pieces all over the floor. And just with little toddlers and kids and a new baby on the way, we knew it was time to tear that apart. And we potentially had some termite damage on the window area. Um, so we knew we needed to get this done and better time to do it. What better time to do it than the winter before baby comes. So we started with demolition. I had my husband and my brother-in-law helped. They gutted it, got that done in a day. That part's easy. Demo is always the easy part. And they didn't find as much termite damage as we anticipated. They took the old cast tub out and we ended up putting in a new steel tub. Um, and the steel tub we had to order is a 56 inch tub. Now, since this bathroom is so narrow, we had to get 56 inch cause 60 inches standard. So we had to order a special order, a uh, tub and we ended up with this steel tub. Now, if you do buy a steel tub, there are some cons. So here's a con that we found is they are very tinny sounding when you tap them. So we had a stuff a bunch of insulation we googled how can you get rid of that tinny sound because we didn't want that for giving our kids baths to have like the water make a weird sound in the tub or if you bump it with your ring or something it would just make a ping sound so we stuffed the edges the bottom with some insulation and that made a huge difference so then they put that in there and then they rewired all the lighting did all new plumbing and my husband and brother-in-law did a super job of doing all that. And then my husband started putting up the sheetrock and he got that done pretty quickly and did what is called red guard around the tub. So after the concrete board was put up, since it's a wet area and you can't just do sheetrock cause that would mold and whatever it would do. <laughs> Then he put up the concrete board and put red guard on it. So it was like completely red paint on that section before he tiled and had to let that dry. So a lot of this process is painting something or putting something up and literally just watching it dry for 24 hours and then doing it again and doing it again because there are processes to getting this done correctly. So he wanted to make sure we would not have any issues once the tile was up with um, leaking of water through the tile or onto the wall or what might happen there. So he did a good job of putting that up and then he had his dad come and help 
with the tiling job and they cut it all themselves. So with the tiling, one thing he would recommend is a wet saw. So they did not have a wet saw, they just had a tile cutter. And so that took, oh, it probably took a good 12 hours if you combine it all, 12 to 14 hours of tiling only. And so I got a 12 by four tile from a lot of these things were from Home Depot or Lowe's, these items we got new. So if I remember, I'll try to link them. Otherwise you can look up white bathroom tile and find the 12 by four. It would have been better to have a bigger tile, but this is what I liked, this is what I chose. And DIY projects are ever gonna be perfect, but it looks so much better than what we had. And he had to build that little niche, or niche, however you wanna say it in, so we had a place to put our soap and shampoo, our razors, you know, things like that. And so that was built in, and that took a lot of time because you had all the little cuts and such. But I think it just looks beautiful having that embedded into the tile wall of the bathroom and not having a hanging caddy. So that was how the tiling process went. He grouted it, he siliconed the edges, and just made it look beautiful. And I love having the shower curtain open. I used to just always close the shower curtain because it just was not aesthetically pleasing. But I don't mind having my shower curtain left open to see the beautiful white top tile job. All right, so after the tub, the plumbing, the tiling was all done, then it was time to move on to taping and mudding, which my husband did, because he's done that before. Um, before he started his own business, he learned some of those handyman trade work. So he was able to do the taping and mudding himself, and then we painted. So. My two colors that I chose for this bathroom, they're actually in our guest cottage. And if you watched that reveal about uh, 10 months ago, I think I told you the colors there or that process. We chose a white dove, I think Sherwin-Williams brand and Revere Pewter, not Sherwin-Williams, sorry. They're Benjamin Moore. So white dove, Benjamin Moore and Revere Pewter, Benjamin Moore for the beadboard and I am loving the change in color. The brightness of the white compared to that dark, stark blue and dark tile just really brightens up this really small space. And that's one thing with the small space I recommend is just keep it lighter. You'll see later the vanity is an accent color of a dark green. So I did bring in some color with the vanity, but for now I like the lighter, brighter white with a little bit of like the gray Revere Pewter on this beadboard. So that was painted and then we just bought an MDF beadboard paneling from Home Depot with like the railing on top here that is just beautiful and adds that really neat cottage architecture and that's what I've been really trying to incorporate into my home is a little more character on the walls, not just with furniture, not just with art, not just with um, pieces I bring into the home, but with actual architecture type character. So I chose this beadboard and then we just put up the hooks. You see they're a little bit farther over than I typically would have put, but we have four hooks that are double so we can hang extra towels for when the baby comes to. And I just really love that classic chrome of the hooks and you'll see that with my light up here and the vanity faucet and handles, the towel hook, the toilet paper holder, like chrome is just a very classic color that I don't think you can go wrong with. We had bronze on the vanity before and it just would, it would look chipped and rusty and so I think this will be easier to maintain and keep clean. So after all the painting was done, um, the next step, my husband installed the flooring and now we got this vinyl plank tile looking floor from Home Depot. Now I was debating on tile, but I didn't want it to start chipping and cracking like the previous tile did. And so I think this is a great alternative. I love the pattern of the um, tiles as, as they look like separate tiles and just like the design that it has. I wanted some design in here as well. And so I don't even have a rug because it's so small there anyways that I just wanna see it and enjoy 
the tile and what that brings out to this room. We have a rug for the tub, of course, when the girls get out or we get out. But I just want to enjoy this floor and, and look at it. And it's not hard on the feet to walk on or anything. So he installed the flooring and then put the new toilet in. And it's so wonderful that I have a handy husband who can do all of this himself. Had to call on a few friends every once in a while for like soldering of a plumbing pipe. Um, one electrical issue we had to ask a question about and get changed. But everything like came together within a week or so after the floor was put in. The vanity was put in as well. And it is a very heavy duty, like 300 pound vanity from Home Depot. And I paid a good chunk for it, but I really liked it. And I thought about DIYing a vanity like I did at our guest cottage, but I just wanted something, something a little more traditional this time, but something that still looks aesthetically pleasing. And I really think this hit the nail on the head. I love the marble top. It's a real marble top a built-in square sink and I like how it's offset to the side so I feel like I have more counter space to the side as well so that we can set our hair supplies or makeup or whatever it is that we need to put on the side. It's a five drawer vanity with cupboard as well. There's so much storage space because we got rid of our built-in mirror um, cabinet that was there as, long, as well as that built-in or the shelf that was hanging above the toilet. And so I knew I needed a little more storage, so I added it with this vanity. Now, here comes the issue with the vanity. If you followed most of my videos, you heard me say there was a problem that we ran into. This vanity is too long. The door should be right here. We had to reverse our door and open it out, which a lot of you might be thinking, oh, it's gonna run into your hallway or it runs into whatever is out there. And yes, it goes out. But there's a little nook out there that fits perfectly to have our new door. My husband put in the new door frame and everything. I painted that, painted the door, and got that all in. We just reversed the door so it opens out. And honestly, I think it makes the space look so much bigger because I don't have to deal with a door right here. And that's why the hooks are back a little further because I planned for a door to be hiding this. But I love that I can see the beadboard without the door hiding it. And so I get to enjoy this so it was a drawback it was an issue we thought we were going to have to get our vanity or something but we made it work just by reversing how the door opens so it opens to the outside instead of to the inside and that is okay we made it work the vanity sticks out about an inch or so but if i wasn't sharing that with you i don't know if you would notice if you came to visit our home so i just love how the vanity looks the space it gives the storage it gives the marble top, um, we added the chrome faucet and handles that we just got from our local Ace Hardware store, the Moen brand, and I just think it's a beautiful aesthetic. There are bronze handles and poles, but I think it's okay to mix like two metals or so. I don't want to over mix my metals. I didn't want like a copper and a bronze and a chrome, so that's why I thought it was okay to keep the bronze for the vanity. And then the lighting up top was one I think we got from Home Depot or Lowe's as well. Just a three light fixture to hang over the vanity. And it is so bright in here. My husband installed the recessed lighting fan. And it's just, again, so nice to have. We have three separate light switches to turn everything on separately to make it nice and bright for when you're doing your makeup or whatever it might be. And then the mirror I found on Marketplace. It is an old dresser mirror. And I just, I like mixing that old with the new because the vanity is new, the mirror is old. And so having that just brought in, it has some tinge to the mirror a little bit, a few black little specklings, but I just like having that old with new look and it's a nice large dresser mirror. So it gives you a lot of room to look if let's say my husband and I were standing there together. And then I just added a few fun little touches. We got the shelves off of Amazon and I put those up. I should say my husband put those up for me. And right now I don't know if I currently like how they're decorated or done up, but I put a few things on there for the sake of the video. And I don't have any art up here yet. I'm still on the hunt for something, whether it be a really long narrow piece or I had that winter scene picture that I think would look really good in here. I had that art piece that was out in the living area. 
So the shelves, I didn't want wood color because I thought it would contrast with the dark wood of the dresser mirror. So I went with a lighter um, shelf, two shelves, and I think it was like 20 bucks on Amazon. So if I'm not in love with it, I can change it. But I think I am going to enjoy the look of these shelves there. And the curtain was just off of Amazon. I got a longer curtain as we have the rod set up a little bit higher. It's just a beautiful little cream color tasseled shower curtain that brightens up the space again. And maybe eventually I'll want to put color there. But I'm just enjoying the brightness with a little bit of the color, the Revere Pewter on the B board and a little bit of the flooring, um, what do you say? The little bit of the flooring pattern that I am really enjoying. So I think that pretty much gets everything. I added just a few more touches with the chrome toilet paper roll holder because the previous one had a built-in one on the vanity. Just found a whisk wicker basket at a recent rummage sale that I put in there for the trash can. And that's that, like there's not much space for anything else. So we're keeping it extremely minimal in here. I'm enjoying all the extra storage in the vanity and enjoying just being able to take a wonderful shower in here, give the girls a bath in this beautiful space and enjoying just the hard work that has paid off. We are missing the floor vent, which you saw in some of the footage, I'm sure. So we still need to go get that floor vent, but I wanted to get this video out as it has been a long process and my Instagram stories have been showing some here and there and my day in the life videos and such have been sharing a little bit of what's been going on but I wanted to officially reveal my bathroom for you with where it currently stands and some of the things actually everything that we have done in here so I hope you enjoyed seeing the whole process of this bathroom renovation gut job from start to finish. Probably missed a few things here and there, but I just am loving this space and wanted to share that with you. And you will be seeing a few more little DIY room renovation videos coming up as we are working on our bedroom with a board and batten and just a little bit of aesthetic things in there as well before baby comes. So hopefully that video can come out in not too long. But I enjoyed sharing this with you. Hope you're having a blessed and wonderful day and I will talk with you in the next one.